relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you're sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man score, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, GYBB? Get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Nice. You know I am, even though I'm having a tough time keeping these gators down. Difficult. Difficult. Yeah. Trey, yeah. you ready to rock and roll? I'm chilling. I'm good. Eating figs. <laughs> eating figs? What Why is that? Guy, a, are you actually eating figs? figs or is that the... <laughs> I was gonna say, nah, that- what? It's not a euphemism. You think okay. like eating figs is a no? Nah, I'm eating figs. Yeah, man. I don't know what's what on the street anymore. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't think you can spell euphemism. So whatever. Anyway, uh, we got a special guest in the house today. No, uh, she's actually been on the show before. Um, good friend of mine, funny, 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 funny comic, and a good friend of mine for many, many years. Uh, give it up. Good- for Carrie Louise Qatar. What's going on, Carrie? Hey, Carrie? thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. For, uh, I appreciate you. I mean, how's those handsome boys you got? Oh, my God. They're going to be seniors. The twins are going to be seniors. How old are they now? Uh, they'll be 18 in wow. December. And don't they count that down when they're, they're like, they're like, in 18 days or whatever, <laughs> in so many hours, I can be out of here and get a tattoo without your signature. They keep telling me all these things that they can do. Really? In like Coronavirus. Three short months. I know, I know. And like, they, well, maybe you lucked like, out at the ahead. right time for yeah, them to turn 18. Tattoo? That and I'm would... like, when you get your tattoo, where are you going to live? Because yeah. you're not living here. <laughs> well, you know, there's a there's a huge homeless population around, so they could get a tent. They got a tent. They they might have a temp from back in the day, so. so I mean, not that I'm against. Get a pit bull. To I'm not marks. against tattoos, like I, you right. know, but I just want them to be sure. Like I'm gonna get a tattoo when I'm old, just so I know exactly what it's gonna look like when I'm old. I get you. I get yeah, you. So my appointment's next Tuesday. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I uh, what's, no, what's the awesome is gonna be French. I'm not. Fr- I'm not French. <laughs> I, I, I know. No, I'm saying the tattoo will be oh, fresh. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, not on an 18-year-old who's young and just about to go to college. They don't know anything. And, they, and I, have a, I have a 12-year-old who wants to be like the 18-year-olds, and he's going to be getting one and get a tattoo. No. He's going to want it at 13. So <laughs> um, it's, it's funny because I had I had, I, I had got my tattoo. I think the first one I got was at 19. I was 19 when I got my first one, and that was uh, – what was the 40, what was the tattoo? Was I uh all is life. I got a I actually have an island uh with palm trees on my inner thigh. So <laughs> so so Ew, now, do, you re- no, do you regret that? What does it look like now? It looks a couple still of years fine. later, still, decades listen, later. Carrie, that's that's still paradise. It's Paradise Island down there still. Yeah, with with a hurricane, a couple that's of few hurricanes. No but, you know, Hurt? some some of the the, <laughs> the bush is a little bit rancid, but that's all right. You know, it's a little gray bush, but that's all right. Uh, it's still paradise, my friend. The, the the I got a you know I got a baby right, Carrie. I know. I so, know. So I mean, know? it's still you can say what you wanted. I what left you, it in. I left it you, in, and it works. What are you going to do when your baby is 13 and says, Daddy, will you sign this so I can get a tattoo? You have um, tattoos all over you, will you? Yeah, I, I mean, when he's 13? Uh, yeah. No, nah, I wouldn't do it when he's Dante 13. Would, but 
Dante would probably go, well, what's the tattoo first? Let's figure it <laughs> I'd be out. Like, what kind of art? Let me see your artwork. I would yeah. go, let me see your artwork. First Who of all, got? who'd you commission for this? I wouldn't even, I don't think I would even get a tattoo now. It's so corny. It's like corny. It's like, ugh. it's your, your, it's cooler now to not have a tattoo than it is to have a tattoo. Who do you think <laughs> ruined really? that? Who ruined that? <laughs> no tats, you know? And it's just every, bar, every barista and every, like, when you used to see a guy a with a tattoo, huh? Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares about your birthmark. It's dude. cute. We don't care. I don't. Nobody. No. No. They don't. They don't you care. You can tattoo your around your birthmark and make it look like something. Yeah. That's, cool. That's uh -huh, where it's at now, right, bit. Dante? It'll look like the well in the ring. Just. <laughs> <laughs> it just <laughs> look like your dirty ass. That's when you're in a foul. Yeah. Oh, how do you know about it? You've been peeking. You just told everyone. <laughs> yeah, but you, 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 you <laughs> don't. You mean? can't. You don't how have do you know about it. You can't it's judge. On. You can't it's judge on. how dirty it is. It's not dirty. I take a shower. Um, Man, I'm saying it's dirty because you dirty, nigga. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Dante, how old is your little one? He's just turned one Saturday. Oh my god, that's amazing. That Yo, in fact, hit my PayPal and my Venmo. Buy my baby something, fans. Oh What's wrong god. with y'all? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you your baby this. Yes, I want. I is that your book? Yes. It's, book. it's my children's book. I, right, I is, would love that. What is and, the title um, of that for people not watching on YouTube? It's illustrated by a comic as well. So what kind of what kind of book is it? What's it's it about? Called, What's the story? It's, it's called Harry the Elephant Has an Allergy. I don't know if your son has allergies, but I didn't find out that my son had an allergy till he was four. Right. So you never know. And um, it's it, and it's about an elephant allergic to peanuts, and he meets and he meets a cow allergic to milk. He meets a chicken allergic to eggs, and it goes on from there. No. Really cute. Uh, I got my my son has perfect genes, so he's not allergic to anything. Not uh, yet. <laughs> no love. But the weird he thing is, I, I think I saw Andre reading that book uh, a couple of days ago in his I'm reading. I'm trying list. to figure out what I'm allergic to. Yeah. <laughs> is that uh, and, is Andre, your reading level? Andre was <laughs> like, "Yo, I'll, it's it's not enough pitches in this." The um, it's <laughs> it, what's what's funny is like um, it's just corny. I like. I feel like it's corny to get a tattoo now. It's like everybody has a tattoo. When you saw a guy with a tattoo. You were like, this guy saw death. You know what I mean? Like, and now it's just the, the barista has it, the dude at the deli counter. It's just like, ugh. When I got my tattoo, I, I, it was, uh, oof, wow. Um, 87, 88, 1988. Oh, I thought it was earlier than that. I thought you got like a socket to me tattoo or one of those. No, nah, no, nah, I, I, I wasn't around with the socket to me, <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, yeah, no, but I got, I got, the, the, I got my first tattoo uh, when I was stripping, and then, the, um, and then it was like, but it was like a thing. It was like, oh, don't get a tattoo, and then, and then you couldn't, you also couldn't get tattoos on your hands. Like you, everything went at your wrist so that you could cover it up. Because if you got a, ta if you had a tattoo, you couldn't get a job. You remember that? That, that yeah. was the whole thing. It's like, right. oh my god, you know, you'll never get a job. And now it's like everybody has a. You either had to be yakuza or or you <laughs> or you had to be some on a biker gang or something. And or now a sailor every, on yeah. shore leave. Sometimes you, I, I don't think you can be a barista without something on your face. Yeah, the man rings just, or whatever. It's just yeah. ridiculous. So it's like it's so uh, kind of corny now. Like I, I would, I would, I wouldn't be, I would be like telling my, I would tell my son like, don't get a tattoo. It's corny. You know, I kind of say that to him now. Like he, he's really cuddly. It's weird because. Um, I don't know if you find this. You know how everybody talks about the gender fluidity. Everybody, everything's supposed to be gender fluid, right? And and I'm not a, I'm not disagreeing with that. But I, here's something that I noticed because this is my first child. Like I had a stepdaughter. My stepdaughter was two, and I raised her from the time she was two years old. But having this new baby, there is an energy that that my wife gives off that I, I realize I just don't have. So, like, when he wakes up out of, out of his nap or wakes up for the first thing, he don't want no part of me. Like, he doesn't want, I, like, even if I try to pick him up, he's like, ah, get, like, get away from me. At Once he's gotten and he's acclimated, then he'll come and wrestle with me and stuff. So it's almost like he understands that there's a different 
energy, like there's a different kind of masculine energy that I give and there's a different kind of energy that she gives. So, and, and it's not like he's been programmed, do you know what I mean? Like programmed to, in the, in the, in the male patriarchy, he, he's, he's just one. So he hasn't read any books about gender fluidity. He's not a social justice warrior. He just takes to certain, and he, and you know, Ted Alexandro is super, super liberal. And Ted was, him and I were having this conversation, because you know, his baby's about the same age. It's like just one years old. And he's, he was like, it's the same thing. And so, you know, we're, we're not talking about the tolerance of it, but there's an energy that as a mother you have that, that's right. The and the man. energy is is matched. So at subconsciously, the child knows when the the mother is anxious or has anxiety. Right. The kid will start acting up and no one really knows what's going on. Um, the mother may not even know, but it's a kinetic energy that the, the child feels. Right. Just the child mother, it just is. So when the mother is anxious, you you'll feel your kid acting up. You watch when you're when you feel that your your uh the your baby mommy is stressed or yeah. you're a lot of the baby's acting up a little. Oh I absolutely I absolutely well when she's stressed, he clings to her so right. much like he don't want no part of me or just just right up under her. He stays right up under her, he won't go. So it's like I, I get, you know, and, and it's funny because, you know, I mean, the, the, our podcast has always been about the gender roles and stuff like that. And I've, I've gotten a lot more liberal in terms of it because I, I think that a man can have that. A man can have that kind of maternal energy, too. Absolutely. But I think you you have you generalize. We generalize things so that we can escalate the dialogue. So but. Moreover than that, like, I, here's a, a thing, and Ted and I was talking about this, that she can hear him cry. Oh, yeah. I can't hear, I, she's like, you don't hear, I'm like, no, I don't hear it. It's almost like telepathic how connected she is to his right. energy. You know? It's innate, it's instinctual, and also it's instinctual with the, with the kid, too. So they did a study with fire alarms, and kids mm. were sleeping through that big, huge, eh, eh, eh. Mm. And as soon as the mother says their the kid's name, they're up. Oh, really? Even if it's like a whisper or or whatever, they're like, because it's it's the it's the energy, it's the connection, and and all that stuff. I mean, especially if you're giving birth to the kid, you right. are in that womb right. for you know uh, listening to that voice and stuff. That's they've done studies on that as well. So mm. it's I mean, you can't. You can't be replaced as a mother. You are the mother, and it is instinctual, and there's science behind it, and there's right. nothing you can do about it. I right, mean, you, right. you know, you can do the gender roles and all that stuff. You might have to work harder, and it can work, absolutely, but it's not instinctual. Yeah, yeah. and he, he also knows, um, like, he knows the difference in the play. Like, my touch is different. It's It's... Even like like another thing he does now is he'll he bites her all the time. He he Ooh. he he bite but he bites me and I bite him and I bite him back, right? Like I he bites me, I bite him right back, and now he don't bite me no more. Right. And I was like, I was like, why don't you just bite him back? And she but she won't, you know, this is her first you'd, kid. You'd be surprised. All right, how I have a I have a chapter on biting on my mean mommy book. I'm okay. gonna send this to your to your baby mom. Okay. Um, because all the doctors and everybody said, don't bite back, don't bite back. And I had a kid, my twin would bite his other twin all the uh -huh. time. Right. And I follow the rules, don't bite back, don't do this, don't. And I had instinctually, I thought, I just knew the kid didn't understand what a bite felt like. Right. So I took his finger, I said, do you know what you're doing? This is what it feels like, never bit again. Really? So I think that what I, my book says, Mean Mommy, it's all about trusting your instincts and being right. A mean mommy and bite your when, kid back. When when did you write this? When did you I write wrote this? Book? This this I wrote before my children's book. By just my children's book, I just wrote wrote. This was okay. about five years ago. I'm doing the audio book now. Okay. You can get this on Amazon, and you can. Well, I'm gonna send you both. Okay. And you know, and this is for you, Bad Dad, Tom Cotton, my husband, Tom Cotton. Okay. Okay. So, I hope Carrie you, has like seventy pack. books that she's gonna pull out every two minutes. Like no matter what we talk about, like my car broke down. Oh, really? I'm well, well I got it. Andre yeah. was like, "I'm eating figs." She was like, "Here's the best fig book right here." Yeah. Um, 
the, but it's 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 really. I mean, look, I I I you know a lot of times I've always dated women with I, like a lot. I've, a lot of women I've dated with kids, and I've always gotten along with the kids, and so I like I had a lot. But I think having you know having a child so late, it was just because I'm 53. This is my first kid that I'm right. having, and and it's just so much easier because. I'm just not making the mistake. It's just logic. The logical progression of things just is so. And so a lot of the. Well, you're just a better person uh, yeah. just as not even as a dad, just as a human being. You're a better person at 53 than you would have been at 20. Yeah, absolutely. You just know more. And and I and I've been working on myself, too. And I, what I find a lot of times, you know, like people have children at a younger age and they're not they haven't really figured their own shit out. And so it's it's sort of like it's sort of like watching porn and 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 <laughs> it's like watching porn and buying buying heroin on Silk Road and Bitcoin. And then you have all these viruses and then you get a new laptop and then you back up from the you, you back it up from the from the from the time machine and then all the viruses from before go on the new laptop but you haven't seen the porn and g- gone through the experience. So these, so we kind of, we kind of give these kids um, the the our neuroses without eat with it. But they don't even have the experience that ends up getting that where we got the road the, the neuroses from or the neuroses the, first place. the neuroses in the first place because it's just like they have this anxiety and stuff but they didn't even do this stuff like i always say like i grew up in brooklyn in brooklyn in the 90s 80s and 90s and i say this all the time you know the the, the headphones beats by dre if you walked around in the 80s and the 90s with a pair of headphones that way that cost four or five hundred dollars because everybody knows what they cost they the, the the branding is such so you see that red cord or you see or even the Bluetooth with the B in it, you would get knocked in the head. There's no way you could walk outside in Brooklyn, 80s and 90s with Beats headphones on. Um, even if you had an iPad, we used to take the iPad and get cheap headphones and uh, not iPad, but an iPod because they didn't have an iPad. <laughs> but the iPod, we would put cheap Sony headphones because if they saw the white cord, if you saw the white cord coming out yeah. of they, they, you would get stuck up. And yeah. so it's, it's, it's an interesting difference in the way, you know, the way I, you know, but I, I, I was raised in that. I, I literally don't think like I, sometimes I think about like, how did I survive through that? But all of those things gave me the, the, the wherewithal to navigate problems and, and, and stuff. And because it was just a crazy time, you know, you lost me at porn on your porn. computer. You so was I said porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I know what you mean. And you were, and look, you were, uh, you knew enough to, uh, say, look, I'm going to teach my child this and this is how I feel. And you trusted right. your instincts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it worked. Yeah. I, what, why did they say don't bite back? Uh, Because they say it doesn't work or whatever, all these books. And they say, you know, you're teaching them how to bite more. And you do. I don't know. I'm like, I'm I'm, in my book. I teach you to trust your instinct. You're a mother for a reason. You have instinctual uh, mother Mm -hmm. things. And the the theory might be they would I would assume is that you're teaching them that violence is a solution or aggression is a solution for problems. I don't see how you could be. uh, But you also say, look, if you get if you bite people, you could get bite bit back. Like, I don't understand how that's not a that's an easy connection to make. Even okay, as so a, uh, just out of curiosity, not that I'm disagreeing with you, Dante, but just uh-uh. playing devil's advocate. Let's say uh, as he gets older, they start to kick. They start to kick and they start to punch. Like, to what end do you? I I'm mean, you throw a hell of a side I'm de- kick. I'm definitely kicking him. I'm side. <laughs> I'm a I'm a back back spinning dragon kick him. <laughs> okay, I mean there is a line, and you yeah, also dude, that's the problem, Carrie. You can't you <laughs> give somebody an inch. Everybody, yeah, you give somebody I, an uh, inch. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the the real thing is that you don't, you know, when you the the concept is not I'm teaching you to bite, and then I got to teach you not to hit, and then I got to teach you how not to. Hit. The point is the, the 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 lesson you learn is don't do to people what you don't want done to you. If you don't like it, then Somebody else is not going to like it. Just that I think that's a concept that you can teach without going through each 
alliteration, each alliteration of, of what they do. Just, you can go back to the, the lesson. You don't want, you want people to do that to you? Don't do it to them. And I mean, I, I think that's a fundamental principle that I think a lot of people, we know, I mean, we, we you know, I, 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 I knew you before the kids. Like, I remember, I even remember when you were pregnant with the kids. And so yeah. we knew each other right. before that. Okay. And, and I think, how many people do we know? So it's got to be close to 20 years, right? 18, 20 years. Yeah. We've known yeah. But how many people do we know, adults who don't really understand, you don't do things to people if you don't want it done to you? Oh, yeah. Well, you, yeah, of course, especially in this business. Yeah, and I, that, I guess that's my, that was my point, why it's saying yeah. how long I've known you and how long we've been doing comedy. So I, I don't think it's a matter of, to, you, you don't have to teach them not to kick. You just teach them, listen, you you will be held responsible for your actions. Right. And I, yeah, and once you I'm learn it, once they yeah. learn that, then I think that's, that's the lesson. And if it takes a rear I'm naked chokehold to do that, I mean, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm still teaching my kids that too. Well, yeah. you know, when they're little, it never changes. They Even when they get older, they think you, you think that it's going to get easier. It never gets easier with kids. It never gets easier. It, it just gets different. I'm still teaching my kids that they're going to be responsible for their own actions when they're, when they're 17. Um, but you know, I don't know if, you know, but I think when kids bite there, it's out of frustration and you need to teach them to use their words yeah. and, you know, things like that. So well, Dante, I mean, what he's about still just la 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 la. He's just doing that, but yeah, he just, and they're frustrated. He, yeah. yeah. What about this strategy? What about grabbing them by the lapel and bringing a, like a three old inch from your face and going, you're going to stop fucking with me. You understand? <laughs> you're gonna I've done that. Method. I've done that already. I've That's done that. Good method. <laughs> but in my book, it says <laughs> it's <the> sign language. <laughs> what, he, so, I'm, I'm joking. My, kid, my, my book is funny, but you do learn a few things through the funny uh, things that I went through, the funny stories. Now, and I mean, I'm still I'm still open to different ideas like like he's one, but he's been potty trained for like he's not even walking yet, but he's 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 potty trained because they, they did this whole thing. Wow. Where they do. I don't know if you heard about this. It's like this thing called a top hat. No. Where, so before the kid can even walk, right? What you know, like you're home with the with the kid, and you know when the kid is taking a shit because it grunts and it farts and whatever, yeah. and you go. So they have this thing. It looks like a pilgrim hat that you really? sit between yeah. your legs, and you sit the. You, I mean, because he he doesn't even he he couldn't even sit up then right. because he was still young. But you sit on so he would grunt and because he, he but but and this, this is the importance of like I think critical thinking. Um, if, 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 if it, if it makes sense, there's a reason why it makes sense. And if you go through, through the, the, like a Socratic method of asking, well, why does this make sense or why does this happen? So it's interesting. No animal in the history of animals wants to shit on themselves. No animal, not bears, not cats. You know, that's why cats shit. And that's why dogs, dogs make noise when they want to go out. Nobody wants to shit in their, in their immediate I mean, Andre does, but that's different. <laughs> but he goes, and that's not but, on purpose. He just passes out. He gets sleepy. Poor he guy. Just, he, smokes, he smokes a lot of weed and just passes out. The, the effort is taking me to not just say fuck off strongly. <laughs> I'm evolving into a good man. You, a yeah. good, forgiven being. Good is, good is strong. Good is strong. Ah, so, um, Dante, but the, so, so what happens is because the, the, the baby, does, you know, no living animal wants to shit on themselves. So when they give you that that noise, you get to know what the signals are. You sit them on the potty. And, and, and because if you think about it, we put them in diapers and then we cheat. We teach them to shit on themselves. Right. And then when you potty train them, you got to unteach them the shit that they learned in the first place. Right. So when I, I, I thought it was really odd because my mom, my mom raised kids. You know, from the time I was a little kid, we always had kids in the house and she always babe. That was her job was babysitting. Other, and she at, at one time, at any given time, she could have 16 kids in the house with me at, at the time. Wow. And and I mean, from kids that were breastfeeding because she was just, you know, the mothers would pump, would pump and they would have she would have breast milk and she would break them and, and raise kids. And then they would go to school. And then after the school, the school bus would drop them off at my mom. So my mom raised probably about 380 kids in the process of her life. And so I always had kids where there was always kids around, but you, you know, this was a different concept for me 
to understand that, okay, I, I know that no animal, I mean, I, I used to have ferrets. And I don't know if you ferrets shit in a litter box, right? And, and so you, you had to have, and if, the, and if the litter box is not clean, they will shit someplace else. So you, you even, they don't even want to, they want the litter box to stay clean. So it just made sense to me that a kid would not want to shit on himself. Like, I went, who wants to do that? I mean, it's not like he's German or nothing. So the, the, um, she would just sit him on the, on the, on the, the potty and he would, and then it became this routine. And so now I'm, nice. I'm saving thousands of dollars in diapers because he, he, he literally is just one years old. He's probably been potty. He's probably been potty trained. I want to say four months now, four or five great. months. But I mean, we saw this thing, and then I just was like, "Well, it, this kind of makes sense." You know what I mean? Yeah. Like what you're saying is just take, uh, which is something that my mother never did. You always put the, you know, you put the pampers on them, and then you then you put the pull ups, and then you put, and then you ultimately had to put them in in cloth you know diaper i mean underwear and then they they had to like learn that they don't like the mess and yeah. stuff and then you had to retrain them and then we we kind of skipped that that's we great skipped that home. what do yeah. you do in the middle of the night it's he kind of sleeps and if he wakes up and he's farting and he and he's grunts then we sit him on the potty uh but what about if you're sleeping well, he usually is grunting and 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 making noise. You know, like yeah. he gets up, he wakes up. Yeah, if he yeah, has yeah. to go to the bathroom, he wakes up and he just, he's like, "Yo, I gotta go to the bathroom." And we're like, "All right, well, we get up and we sit him on the potty." Get and then, the potty. He, then and and I also they also and then I, I read this study that if the kid the quicker you the quicker you potty train your kid, the smarter the kid is because that takes up so much mental energy right in the process of because i mean you know i always use the analogy when i was a kid like i i couldn't i couldn't tie my shoes i had a rough time learning how to tie my shoes and uh and i remember when i when i learned how to tie my shoes you could not come in my house without watching me tie my shoes like all i did every day <laughs> untie it and tie it I'm like you if the mailman came up you want to see me tie my shoes and i you know i would do this that's so how the like, comedy started that's yeah, well, I, I can't. <laughs> but it was like it was a thing so you you can that's also you know, how like you, you started should... stripping right that was your first uh <laughs> that was your first uh, okay. thing Dante. i don't know how you got there but go ahead i'm gonna i'll, I'll bite go ahead no you'd come out there that was the show you'd come out there like hey everybody watch me tie my shoes you were excited as a performer, I was. Then I was like, "Watch me s swing my dick." This is the yeah, same you thing. You did right? it naked. Same thing? You did it yeah. naked. <laughs> I did not tie my shoes naked, but um, I bet you did at least once. Yeah, uh, probably so. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. So, can't, so, it's, oh, so you, what you been doing with this COVID shit? Why you been have, holding up? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, how uh, it's so depressing. It really is. Um, been doing some Zooms in these shows. I'm uh, recording my my book, so I'm going to make that audio book for me, Mommy. So mm -hmm. I've been doing that. That's the hard thing to do is read your own words because I hate mm -hmm. you know, to your own voice. Yeah. I hate my voice. So um, that's a slow process. Uh -huh. um, but uh, these shows are few and far between, and they're, it's it's so hard. I did a the show, a drive-in. It's like basically it was a drive-in. These people stayed in their cars. They heard me on the on the radio. radio. Like yeah. we can do that for free on yeah. Sirius. Um, yeah. Which, by the way, is my CD out. You can download. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, it's called it's called Funny Mummy. Uh -huh. um, get it? Yummy mummy, mean mummy, yeah. fun mummy. All right, that's whatever. It. So, but they were like beeping, like that's how I was getting applause. Yeah. So beeps and little, you know. Yeah, you know, it's, I it's by an airplane flying over. It's diff trying times. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I like I I did a couple of those, and then I was like, look, I'm not, I, I'm not doing this. I just, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it till it comes back to some remnants of 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 what stand up is. Is because you know you spend. You know, you spend 20 years learning how to read the energy of the audience and how to engage and how to keep people's attention. And then all of a sudden, and here's the other thing I've done. I, I did like I did like two of those driving, but the driving stuff that I did was um, driving and social distancing. So they had people, you know, in beach chairs and stuff outside. Yeah, as well. yeah, sometimes. Yeah, that was. But yeah. even that is so. There's a they. What they do is they. You know. You. You. you I mean, I don't have to tell you, but they transmit for the fans. They. They transmit. Right. But there's a, a a second or two second delay 
from the transmission of what you're saying and 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 that transmitting through the car. Right. I so, know. So you got you got people who are live who are who are laughing on cue, and then you got people in the car who are getting it a second later. And so the whole thing that we've learned is to make this conversation right. that's not really a conversation as if it's, as if it's realistic. And then now you got to do something else, you know? Yeah, it's a learned thing, and you're learning on the spot, you know? Yeah, and timing yeah. is everything in comedy. Yeah. And your timing's off. So, uh, but that's it, good, it I think. A couple of beats I had, and I made fun of that, too. Yeah. Yeah, that, you, you don't say that. After 20 years, it doesn't make it fun. It just, it's just aggravating. You're still young and excited, Andre, about every all the aspects. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're still in that phase where... It's like uh, I, mean, I don't not miss what the fuck I had doing stand up. It's just that I know that's not available right now, and I want to continue to do this. So therefore, I'm gonna do what that is. That's what I can do to get this job yeah, done. Or, I'm gonna go or there and not. do that. Or not? Yeah, if or you not? Don't, uh, if you don't I mean, that's how I feel. Yeah, I just was like, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And then when it change, it, it's an interesting thing to like. It, somebody's turning on their wipers and flashing their lights, and that's the whole thing. The whole thing we worked is for that. You know that connection, and you know moving that. You know we're talking about the energy of the baby, the gender, and and, and we learn to read that. And to, 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 to control it and move it in different ways and then to not learn it. Here's what I find, too. A lot of dudes who, who, who sucked on stage do better on this because, like, they're just... They well, plow. some of the people are used to not getting the laughs. So they're, they're used able to, to not getting the laugh anyway, so they plow through they anyway. They plow through it. And yes, it's like, so it's just, here's my joke, like it or not. I don't, there's no adjustment. There's no adjustment in time yeah. and or energy. And they just kind of march through it. And, and so it's a, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. It's a really weird thing. Hey, Do you Dante, think it's going to come back, Dante? Here's, here's what I think. I think, so the first thing you got to do is I think you have to have a, we have to have a, a, a reasonable um, plan to move forward, right? So you got to get Trump out because he's not paying attention to, he's just, he's over, he's over the whole COVID thing, whatever. He's already passed, like I'm, I'm done with this, right? So there's no real cohesive plan to move forward. So here's my thing, you got to get him out of office. If he leaves, because I don't, we don't even know if he leaves. If he leaves, then uh, say Biden and Kamala get in, and then you're talking about six months of a, a, a coherent plan to move forward, right? And then another six months to put that plan in place and then adjust it in a way so that we can get this back to some sense of normalcy. So you're talking 2022. I don't think I don't think it's gonna it'll you can I don't even think you can make that decision until 2022. I don't think it's good. well. It's not going to snap back. Even no, if we no, it's there, never going to snap if we back. We get like a virus all of a sudden. We got a virus. It works, and it's it's not going to snap back. And it's going to happen slowly and yeah. in increments. And you know, a lot of damage has already been done, especially to where we work with these small theaters. They're all yeah. going out of business, and c cruises can't just snap right back. That's some of our business. Yeah, yeah. Colleges yeah. are, you know, they're you know, they're tightening their belt and everything is when they tighten their belt. First thing that goes is entertainment. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, with corporates. yeah, I mean, I mean, but I don't think I don't think you could even I don't even think the light you see the light at the end of the tunnel until 2022 yeah. and 2022. Then you could kind of say, OK, this is where we're at. There's adjustments to be made. And now we can figure out where we go from there. Yeah. But nothing will happen. Nothing real will happen until 2022, I think. Um, and that depends on the plan and how well they adjust the plan, you know, to 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 accommodate what's going on. And then, the, like you said, there's so many businesses that that won't come back. But I will say, you know, people are sitting in the park. They're doing comedy under a tree on a blanket in the park. So people are hungry for it. So there's definitely a need for it, you know? Yeah. 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 When I did that show, I mean, you wouldn't believe the audiences and they were, the, how grateful they were to get yeah. out. Yeah. of the house and felt, feel some form of normalcy. People need people. And so we yeah. will 
I do think that we will be needed and we will be essential soon. Yeah. But, you know, I, it, I mean, it, it will come back. I mean, we went through this once before. I mean, many, it, it's happened throughout history. I mean, in 1910, right. we had the Spanish flu. So we will come back from it. Uh, Dante, I have some listener mail and stuff. If we want to get into giving some mm. advice. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it down. Uh, and Carrie, so Carrie, how long have you been married now? Uh, 18, uh, it's nine. Oh, wait, 20, tw- what year is it? 2020, 20, 20 so 19 years. Wow. 19 years. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And how long were you with Tom? Cause oh, I, I mean, sort of yeah, yeah. Six years before that. Sam has done the show. I mean, Tom has done this. Tom has done the show before too. He's done it with me a couple of times. So I mean, so okay. So we'll let's do some some listener mail, and then you can give me a little bit of uh your experience on uh, on that. I mean, you can write another book on that if oh, we. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't plan for the pandemic. Now we're both unemployed. This is nice. <laughs> uh, so here's a, a question from a uh, one of our female listeners. Um. Why don't men understand when we say go away that we are not playing hard to get? <laughs> okay, what do you say to that, Carrie? <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm, I hope that, that <laughs> men nowadays do get it. <laughs> no means no. I mean, if anything, shouldn't they? Me too. Didn't me too teach these men? No means no. I don't. Well, here's here's the where thing. This girl's coming from. Here's here's the thing. I I think that sometimes I think sometimes it's not a situation. Now now look, I've never wanted to be around somebody who I who didn't want me around. So I don't. There's no. I don't have any me too thing where I was trying to force myself on people. I think what happened, and like even with the me too thing, uh, I think you you end up in a situation where you have people who you have men who didn't have the charisma or did, wasn't able to to attract women in a certain way. So what they the the play was back in the days is like, okay, I'll become rich and famous and then I'll bend people's will because I'm powerful enough to bend people's will. Or I have so much money or I have so much power. The 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 problem with that is number one, it's it's you're bending people's will with the power and the money you have. They, they're still not really interested in you. And even if people, if there's a trade-off uh, because of the money or the power or whatever, it's they're still not really interested. So there's a situation. I think there's. I think what one of the things that the nuance of this is that um, you. As a man, you're so so. I get this all the time where guys wanna, they're not, they're like, in with, with the Me Too in place, they're like, well, how do I approach a woman without, you know, without overstepping the boundaries? And and then again, I, like I, over and over again, and we have on the show, there's three principles that we we talk about all the time. Is the the acronym is ACE? It's authenticity, credibility, and empathy, right? So authentic, authenticity in the fact that you speak the truth. You tell the truth, you tell, and, and, and don't be deceptive. So, and I've, I've said this all the time, and one of the things that women have always had to, and, and partially but with the Me Too movement, is that guys were not authentic in the first place. They had ulterior motives, and they were hiding that because they didn't think that they could be honest about what they wanted from a particular social engagement. And so they lied about it, and then they... And then you got a button that locks people in your in, in your in your office because you didn't really because you 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 miss you're misrepresenting yourself in the first place. Secondly, the credibility is say what you mean and mean what you say, um, and that means there's a certain level I, I, that's a it's an interesting thing. It's one of the things about your husband that I, he was always kind of a straight dude. It's like I this is what I say, this is what I mean, this is you know, boom 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 we quit. But there's also an empathy that I think men had to ha- needed to have in terms of okay, to not consider that women were um, that every time a woman goes out. I've said this. I haven't said this a lot lately. But every time a woman would go out on a date, she's risking her health, her life, and her well-being. Like she has to read the social cues to see that this guy is not dangerous. That's even when it comes to a cup of coffee. So men are not, they're not, they don't have to deal with that. Like no guy is going out thinking, oh, if I go out on this date, I could be raped. 
It's just not even right. a concern. And, right. and women constantly have to consider that in a real, not just in, in kind of this superficial way, in a real way. Like if you're younger and you, you're, you're going out on a date, you're texting your friend, this is who I'm with, or you're trying to let them know because you, you know that you could be in danger. So there's an, a, 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 an authenticity, credibility, and empathy, understanding what women have to go through, being honest about what is and saying what you mean and mean and what you say. That I think that that makes you more attractive anyway, because I mean, how many guys do women deal with all the time that just don't really have something in mind, but won't, but are really being deceptive. And when you're being, if you're being undecisive, you're being undecisive because you're playing above your head. Like you're, you're, you're dealing with some girl that you don't think that you really should be with. So you're trying to trick her into thinking something else so that you can you can get laid or you can get with her because you don't really think you're worthy of it in the first place. But if you're really credible and you're really authentic and it's and the cards on the table, then I think you can be honest about what you and 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 if and if the woman says I'm not interested, then then it's we're understood. I'm not interested. Now if I go, if you say I'm not interested and I and I'm and I'm a guy who deals with honesty and credibility now I've, I've, I'm full, full disclosure. My cards are on the table, and you go, no, I'm not interested. And I go, okay, then I'm gonna go. Now, he's wondering why people, why guys aren't, why guys are not listening to that. Why right. are they not going? But they're not listening because they're being deceptive. They're being deceptive. They, they, right. they really have something else in mind. So they're not. So the, the minute the guy is not listening to it, right? That tells you who the person is. I mean, and, and to the same token, um, I, 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 I was talking about this the other day. I was watching this video. This guy was trying to talk to a girl. The girl said, no, no, I have a boyfriend. And she walked, she walked away. And then it was like a kind of a, a spoof video. Not a spoof video, but it was like a, a... So then he goes, no, you're not interested. Okay. And then he gets in a Lamborghini, right? And the girl acts like she sprained her ankle. She's like, oh, I hurt my ankle. And she comes back and she starts talking to him, right? And it's just interesting to watch that because to think that women are not deceptive as well as men. I mean, human beings are human oh, yeah. beings. People yeah. are deceptive. People are inauthentic. People are, are not credible. And people are, are, are selfish and unempathetic on both ends. The difference is that a woman has to deal. If, a, if she makes the mistake, it could mean a physical harm or rape or, or, or so on and so forth. So... When she's saying the question is what? Why are they not? Listening. They're not. They're not because they're showing who they are authentically. I mean, you're always gonna be in such. You're always gonna have social engagements, whether you're a man or you. Because those guys who those guys who are who are that are not just that to women. Like those creeps. If you work for a creepy guy like that, their creepiness doesn't just. It's, it's not just pointed at women. If you work for a creep and you're a guy, and even he's not, if he's not gay, the whole point is that there's no sex involved. But he's a creep to everybody. He's not just a creep sexually. He's a creep. He's dishonest. He's, he's, he doesn't have any credibility in everything. In this. So if you got a boss like that, he's fucking you too if, if it, in not social ways. And so you, 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 you have to navigate. I think it's, it's, it's absurd to navigate, to try and navigate, uh, uh, or, or ask a question where you're navigating, you're navigating awful people, period. Now the, the repercussions of being an awful person is different for women. And, and you got to have the empathy to see that, but you're talking about awful people. You're talking about people that take advantage of people, people that, that, that if you if, if, if I'm a guy and I work for that guy, he's a dick to me too just in different ways because he's not because he's not looking for me in a, looking at me in a sexual way so it's it's uh, it's you no matter what you do there's an, a, you have to navigate horrible human beings which there's a lot of horrible human beings period i mean and and i find that if you're you know like so if in 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 you know when i was dating and i go hey i'm interested in you such and such a uh, Okay, cool. And the fact that I'm I'm was so ready to to okay, you don't because I I feel like I'm dope. Like I I think you hang out with me, 
you're going to learn things you never learned. You're going to go places you're never, you're never going. You're going to eat things you never eat. I'm probably going to spend some money that I wasn't going to spend. We're going to do things that we never did. And I feel like I'm my genuine intention is to create moments with you because I'm interested. So if you don't want that, I'm good. I, I, I can, I, I'll go find somebody who, who does want that. But if I think that if, if I'm going in this thinking that you're giving me something that I that I need, that I, I, I'm not really clear about who I am as a person. Now I got to figure out what's my strategy. I, I got to. Oh, you said no. But did you really see me? I'm like, good. And then I, and I bounce. And then what you find is when you bounce, women who are deceptive, they go, oh, wait, wait a minute. Where you, where you going? I go, well, you told me you didn't, wasn't interested, so I'm out, right? And then they're chasing you because, because, you, didn't, because you didn't give that power up because you basically were saying, I, I think we teach people how to treat us. And, when we, when we, and, and if we tolerate anything less than that, then we leave room for this kind of ambiguous. It's still your, there's, there's, there's victims but mostly it's volunteers. So we're doing things. You make a decision. If, you, if somebody is showing you who they are and then you're still putting yourself in that situation, then you can't, you're not being victimized. You're volunteering for this, which is an interesting concept. You've got, I mean, I, and I understand, that, I understand that some people are afraid and stuff, but people, why are people afraid? It's because they're insecure in the first place. They don't think that they have value. And if you think you have value... <laughs> Then you go, I'm good. I, I'm good. I, I, and, and that, but they, I don't think that people really understand that. You know, there's so much where people are insecure about, they're insecure about what their value is. And then one was this, and, there, and, there, and there's, a, there's an undenying idea. It's like, you know, I don't know if you ever seen that, that, that commercial where the lady goes to Ikea and then she's running out of the store with a whole bunch of bags. And she's going, Henry, start the car. The reason why she's running out is because she's going, the prices are so low that she feels like she's, the prices are so low, she feels like she's stealing. So she wants to get out of the parking lot before they change their mind. If you're, if you're operating in your life in a way where you're going, Henry, start the car, it's because you don't really feel like you have value. You feel like somehow you've gotten over. Whereas when you're working on yourself and who you are and, and you're trying to be the best version of yourself, you don't feel like, like my time is just as important as your time. In fact, your time might not even be as important as mine. And now I get to know you and I go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't, I'm, I, I don't, I don't want to spend time with you. And I don't care whether you don't fuck me or you don't do fuck me or whatever or how attractive you are. It's, I care about the character of where you are. So I think that's, the problem is that people are not working. Everybody's trying to find the technique. How can I get more of what I don't? What your thought on that? Because I, I kind of feel like you agree, you don't agree, or what? My thought, my thought? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And just to play devil's advocate, too, I totally agree with you. But also, too, what, how is the woman actually saying no? Like, she might not be honest with herself. Exactly. Right? I mean, exactly. is she really saying no? Right, right. Or, you know, which, you know, you don't know. Is she confident in herself to say, get a, get the fuck away from me? Right. And if she says, yeah. get the fuck away from me, and the guy is still pushing, it, you didn't, re like, when you say, get the fuck away from me, what you're saying is, this is my fucking line. And anything past that is pretty much, is, a, is an assault. But if you and most people get it, most right. guys get yeah. it. Yeah. So that's the thing where I'm thinking that maybe they're not uh, confident in themselves to actually say no. So yeah, so I, I think it narrows down to loving yourself, working on yourself, right. right, and being confident before you can go out into the world with and be with anybody. Yeah, and, and I, I think you got to be honest. You got to be honest about what your value is because if you really, and don't get me wrong, I, I, you know, like I do, I do the consultations. I like, I do relationship consultations and stuff. And, and the thing that I, I, you know, there's always some, some guy that will say to me, you know, I, I dated this girl and we, we had a great date, but I, um, you know, I, uh, I don't know, you know, how long should I wait before I, 
I call. I said, you should call her back whenever the fuck you want to. Like, if you want to call her back the next day, you call her back the next day. Now, if she says, oh, he called me back too soon, he likes me too much, that's an insecurity on her part because she's saying, you like me more than you should because I know I ain't shit. <laughs> so why, if I know I ain't shit and you like me, there's something wrong with you. That's, that's the dynamic yeah. of what's happening. So, but if she, if you call up and she goes, oh, he's calling me back already, you know, you get people who want who are abusive and been in abusive relationships to themselves or they've been abusive relationship with their parents and they spent no time. And so they look for these relationships where they're trying to get the approval of their parents and can't get it. But a lot of times, sometimes, uh, most of the time, you know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm 54 years old. There was my, you know, my parents, my father grew up, my papa was, grew, was born in 1920. He grew up in Jim Crow time before the civil rights movement. So his, his concern was survival. It wasn't, you know, when now we go to therapy and we're like, let me be, uh, let me, let me, my life is the pursuit of happiness and self-fulfillment. Our parents did, wasn't, if you didn't, if you, as long as you didn't kill your kids, you were a successful parent. If they didn't die, you, and if you, if you lost one and you had 16, like my father had eight boys and eight, you still did pretty good. Yeah. Your average was really good. Right. So <laughs> the, 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 um, what's interesting is, so when I look back and I look at my relationship and, and how it was basic fundamental, it was just survival. I have to be honest about the fact that my mom, my mom and pop didn't have the, the emotional acuity to, to give me this kind of self-fulfillment and this, this understanding of, Oh, let me, let me support him and let me show him that he's loved and stuff because they were surviving. They were just surviving. You find that a lot with immigrant parents. I find that all immigrant parents come here and it's like, get your education. And you, you what do you mean you want to be a comic? Go get, mm -hmm. go to get a degree and shut the fuck. Like we got to survive. We got to survive. And then, so now that has changed where this, this, this whole idea of self-fulfillment is, is really new. And you, you, so you, you go through this relationship where you're always looking for the acceptance of your parents. It's your, maybe, it may be your father or your mother or stuff. And then you, 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 you replicate these relationships in your, in the, in your romantic relationships where you, you want to be with somebody who don't want you because it feels normal. It feels normal because that's what we're accustomed to, you know? And, and so, and then, and then you find women and men alike pursue these relationships, these abusive relationships. And then when they get somebody who's nice, oh, I just want to meet a nice guy. You meet a nice guy. And then you run all over them and you treat them like shit because you, because you don't think you're good enough. You honestly, you don't think you're worthy of the kindness and the love that he's willing to get you. So you got to fix those things first, you know? It's a weird yeah. concept. And I, and I, you know, I've been doing consultations for like six years and it, it's such a theme that, you know, I'll ask a, I'll ask a guy or a girl, I'll be like, what, what was your relationship with your mother and your father? What was it? Was he around? Was he not around? Was, if he was around, what was that relationship? And you'll find that over and over again, we marry our mother and father. <laughs> you know, the, the epitome of womanhood is your mother. The epitome of manhood is your father. And if they're fucked up, you just got a, you got a fucked up model that you're, you're trying to. And so, you know, having my little dude, you know, and, and, and just having him now is what I, because I've had time to kind of figure out where my shortcomings are and kind of work on that stuff. You know, it's, just, it's a weird concept, you know. Do, do you find that with your 12 year old that you, that you were a bet? Well, I, 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 I guess I, that's a question I shouldn't even ask because you're writing books about it now. So clearly. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, he's, um, it it was five years difference five years yeah. um i was a lot tired tireder mm. so i do think that um uh and and then i didn't have the energy like i did with the with the twins that's why i, I do think these women who wait to get i want to get have a career i want to do this i want to have a good time before i settle down yeah. you know there's a reason why you can be pregnant by 18. Right, I mean, right, that's, right. We have to kind of meet in the middle. We have to kind yeah. of get back to the basics, I think. Yeah. And 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 we now broke. Can. 
We <laughs> broke. We can't be leaving it in. We broke. I know, no I know. but nowadays, here, like, we broke. <laughs> there's so many ways you can work. You and be think I want to so, pull out? No. We're so better. We're so much better at um, being able to adapt with with the working mothers in place and give them the time they need and still right. accept them to have. So people aren't a, a fear of having a babies that they're going to get fired from their job and they right. can their job. Yeah. So I'm hoping that it's a better America uh, come a couple of years from now, and the and the millennials are going to get pregnant a little bit sooner. Yeah, because they, especially with all these problems now, everybody's going through intravenous and yeah. all this stuff, and it's costly and it's really tough. And so um, I do think that you do need a lot more energy. And I thought it was harder for me just energy wise. Plus, I have the twins running around with yeah, the yeah. twins and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, but I was definitely a more relaxed mom. So those moments of me being uh, anxious uh, didn't happen so much with with right. the other one, and I was a little more. Uh, um, lenient and he is spoiled and my twins always say because I because I'm like oh yeah you know like the your, your yeah. second child you're like oh yeah go ahead yeah. eat the eat the things that and watch the TV and before they get before the other ones do now do you think better so, you think it's better you think you were a better mom the second time around or, or not no I think I was a better first time mom yeah yeah I did uh, I yeah, the energy I had and the excitement and uh, all that stuff. Yeah, but don't you? I mean, what I find now is 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 my wis the wisdom of things is so much. And so maybe I don't have the energy that I had when I was twenty or I was thirty. But I'm very precise about what. Yeah, I'm not. But, you know, like when the bullshit happens, I'm not flustered. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Well, yeah, but there's a plane. There was many years you were in your twenties, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, well so, wait, me when I was married, the, when I was married, your, your but I didn't. I didn't have a child early. I I was. I had a stepdaughter, and I raised her from the time I was two. Yeah. Um, but time she was two. Not she, was two. she was. Yeah, she was two. <laughs> <laughs> you were young when you had her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Dante was getting out there. Of course, you're a better father now. <laughs> but just you know, now it's just it's. I'm so clear about the direction, and I know if I do this, then this will. This this is what I'm teaching him. If I do that, this is yeah. what I'm not teaching. Like I even like his energy to me is weird because like like you said like the, she, he's so connected to her that he he's so clingy to her when she's she has anxiety or whatever and and what i do is i just like yo i, I mean I, I like i don't take it i'm like yo i holler at you when you're ready to talk and yeah. when he when he comes around then we have that moment but it's a quality those are quality moments at the time when yeah. it happens as opposed to where I would take it personal that he doesn't want to, you know, like, he, yeah, he, oh, yeah. he and I, I'm like, I, so, he, so like, I'll come home and he, and, and he'll, you know, he'll be da, 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 da. And then I get home and then he has this thing where he ignores me. Like I, he'll be calling for me and then I'll come on and he'll just ignore me. And I'll be like, all right, yo, cool. And I just, I leave, yo, I'm out. And then he goes, Oh, wait, what? Where you going? Where? And then we have that moment because, and then, we, and I think what's happening, even he understands that I'm not having the bullshit. Like I'm, I'm yeah. just, I'm, I'm, you're not, I'm not gonna be manipulated by my own insecurity. So it ends up better for me. Um, I definitely, uh, yeah, I am a good, better mother that way because you know, I think parenting is a lot of trial and error, and right. uh, I had, you know, the two. So yeah, you I made all the mistakes with the it. twins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had more mistakes. I'm like, I'm not gonna go do that again. I'm not yeah. gonna, you know, go for, you know, you see, you notice the tricks that they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, and yeah. you can catch them a lot easier and faster, so you don't go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, but I wish I had a lot more energy. I wish I had them closer together. I couldn't um, yeah. because, you know, I married a comedian. He was always on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, plug you your, mean you uh... just couldn't get him to the right time? To, <laughs> you couldn't get him at the right in? time. <laughs> five years. I mean, I did want some time because after having twins, I wanted some time, but I didn't want five years difference. But you know what? In the, in the end, it's well, you're really also because he's you're also a comedian, too, because yeah. so you you also had your career. Right. Yeah, so I also you didn't want to go right into it. Yeah. You didn't want to go right. In, yeah. Yeah. So um, but uh, when um, but now when the boys go to college, he's going to he's going to shine. My little one will shine and I, I won't have an empty house. So he's right. going to keep me young. So I guess yeah, yeah. I think that 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 works. I like I like that. 
Kerry, thank you so much for doing the show. Can you um, plug your books and the social media and everything you got going on, please? Again? I didn't again. do it enough? No, do it again. Uh, you can find Mean Mommy in, uh, on Amazon. And I wrote a book, um, Harry the Elephant. It's a children's book. My husband, I married a comedian, which was dumb. This is our only source of income. And he wrote a book. <laughs> Bad Dad. Our kids are going to need therapy. You okay. know this. I wrote yeah. Teen Mommy and Bad Dad. Come on. Yeah. And um, I'm streaming now on Showtime. And you can buy my CD, my new album, Yummy Mummy. No, okay. Funny Mummy. My old album is Yummy Mummy. Uh -huh. You can also download my newest album, which is Funny Mummy. Okay. All right. Dre, talk to me. Andre D. Thompson, y'all. All right. Uh, Harry. <laughs> Harry, talk to me. Uh, I am also releasing a book about being a mother. Uh, <laughs> and, you got the tits for it. You know what? There's no reason. There's no reason to be hurtful. No reason. We're just trying to have a good time here, Dre. Why you always got to make it <laughs> mean? Uh, Breastfeeding <laughs> is the best thing you can do for your child. Yeah. You should do that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I debunked that. It's not the best thing. They say, they that now they say you have to have supplements. Really? Whatever, that's okay. a whole other thing. Okay. Uh, well, here we go. Uh, goddamn supplements. You yeah. can go uh, to uh, my my social media at Harry Turjanian. Uh, there's Catalyst Wrestling, but more importantly, check out the uh, YouTube page for Man School 202. That's where it's going down, and also our Instagram. So we're gonna be doing a lot more stuff up there. Check it out. Uh, everything with me, DanteNero.com. If you want to book some time with me and do a consultation, everything else is in, in social medias. Dante Nero or the Dante Nero, one or the other. Um, GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. If you like what we're doing, tell a friend, tell a friend. We are out. Thank you so much, Kerry. You're the best. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.